Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, we're going to continue exploring hardware acceleration with AWS Inferentia 2. And we'll zoom in on image generation with Stable Diffusion and Stable Diffusion XL, which we released three days ago. Let's get started. If you're not familiar with AWS Inferentia 2, I recommend that you go and read a little bit about it. It's a custom accelerator designed by AWS to accelerate inference for uh, large models like transformers and diffusers, right? So go and read a little bit about it, um, the benefits, etc. cetera. Um, then you may want to look at the um, Neuron SDK, which is the SDK for Inferentia and Trainium, the, the custom accelerator for training. And this has a lot of uh, good information, obviously, on uh, model architectures that are supported, uh, the roadmap for future models, um, which is actually public, uh, performance tips, we'll look at them later, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a good read. And in this demo, I will be using our own open source library for hardware acceleration called Optimum and Optimum Neuron, the library for Trainium and Inferentia, okay? So go check it out, um, and uh, we have some examples. You'll find uh, the release information, the models we support, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So let's get uh, let's get going. Here I am. Uh, I've I've launched uh, an Inf2 instance on AWS using the um, the Neuron AMI built by AWS with the SDK and the tooling, etc. I've only installed. Optimum Neuron on top of that. Uh, I'm using a larger instance because I'm running all kinds of benchmarks, but you could absolutely do this with uh, Inf2 XL, which is the, the smallest one, and we'll look at the pricing later. Okay, so the workflow is very simple. First of all, we need to download a model from the hub and co compile it, uh, convert it for Inferentia 2. Okay, and you can do this with code or you can do this with the CLI. So I'm going to show you both. Let's look first at Stable Diffusion, where I use the code, right? And as you will see, this is really very, this is really very simple. Um, if you are working with the Diffusers library, you would simply create a Stable Diffusion pipeline and work with that. If you want to try out Inferentia, uh, you would install Optimum Neuron and replace your Stable Diffusion Pipeline with Neuron Stable Diffusion Pipeline, just like this, okay? So point at the model, define the, um, the batch size and the shape of the images you want to generate. If you need multiple image sizes or multiple batch sizes, then obviously you can, uh, you can build different pipelines for that, right? And next, I will simply download the model and let Optimum Neuron compile it for Inferentia 2 and save it to local disk, right? And you need to do the compilation once, right? That's why I'm saving it. I don't want to be recompiling every time. This takes about a minute for stable diffusion. I've already done it. Uh, you know, it's not fascinating to watch. Um, and we see the output of that here, right? Okay. So now we have a model that can run on Inferentia. Again, this is the code version. I'll show you the CLI with a stable diffusion Excel. So how about generation? So generation is simple too. Again, we create a neuron stable diffusion pipeline using the compiled model this time. Uh, we select the devices, the neuron devices we want to, to run this on. As you can see on this instance, I have 12 uh, neuron devices and so 24 cores. And so, you know, I could run 12 pipelines if I wanted for different models, different image sizes, etc. That's That's a good way to do it. Here, I'm just going to be using one. And then I prompt the model. I warm up once and then run 10 iterations and measure the time. So let's see how we do on this. So we're going to see the model being loaded uh, on the uh, on the first two devices here, on the first two cores, sorry. 
And then we should see some blinking lights pretty quickly. Yes, so that's the warm up. And if you press F, that's Neuron Top, by the way. If you press F in Neuron Top, you can switch between utilization and teraflops, right? That'll keep you busy playing, you know, until the images are generated. So it should be two and something seconds. Let's see how we do. 2.46. So 2.46 is a good time for um, stable diffusion generation. Um, and in fact, if we go and look at this nice blog post, and as usual, I'll put all the links in the video description, we'll see um, that this post generates at 2.42 seconds, right? So that's, uh, you know, it's good. It's good that we can actually reproduce the blog post. And when it comes to cost, uh, so as mentioned, you could run this on the smallest inf2 instance, which would cost you 76 cents an hour, but I routinely uh, launch those as spot instances where I spend, I think, 26 cents an hour. So the, the price per image that you see here can easily be divided by three. Okay. Um, so if you generate in 2.4 seconds, 2.5, you can generate, I don't know, maybe... 1200 1300 images per hour uh, at a very very low price so this is uh, certainly more competitive than what you could do on gpu instances but i'll let you check and come to your own conclusions right okay um this is stable diffusion so how about we try stable diffusion excel and this time I will show you how to use our CLI to export the model, if that's your preferred way. Uh, so we just use the optimum CLI command line, which is part of the optimum library. Export to neuron, model name, the task type, and then batch size, height, width, and where you want to where you want to save, right? And we force this to make sure we are using VF16, uh, which is uh, natively supported by Influentia. Okay, so exporting is very simple. In the case of Stable Diffusion Excel, it takes about an hour. Um, so make sure you save the model because you do not want to run this again and again for no reason. And when it comes to generating, it is almost the same. The only difference is you need to use the Stable Diffusion Excel pipeline, not the Stable Diffusion pipeline, right? And of course, I made that mistake. Load the model from disk, uh, specify the device IDs. Let's try two devices first. And we'll see what we can do with more. And the rest is the same. Warm up, predict 10 times. All right, let's run this thing. So this will be a little longer um, because the, obviously the model is a little bigger, so it needs about maybe 30 seconds to, to load and then it's gonna start predicting, okay? So I'll pause the video and I'll see you in, uh, in a minute or something. All right, so it looks like we're predicting in 13, 14 seconds, something like that. And we can see the two cores are very, very busy. busy. This is a this is a big model. So maybe adding more cores will help. Let's see. Okay, maybe maybe one more. Two more. I've lost count. Okay, 15.6. So now let's try, which is good, which is already a good number, but let's see if we can do better with um, a few more devices. Okay, so let's run this again and we'll see. Reference time, 
So it looks like we're a little faster. Yes. 13 seconds. Uh, the core was not, we're not super busy, but if I read this message, I think it tells me why. Right? Because I'm using a batch size of, of one and that's harder to split across um, different cores. So working with larger batch sizes would probably give me even better performance. But, but still, I can generate it in 13 seconds. And, um, and this is good. And as I mentioned before, this is very, very cost effective. So if you want to dive deeper, I would recommend checking this out uh, on the Neuron SDK documentation, Data Parallel Inference. It goes into you know mul using multiple cores, working with um, batch sizes and doing dynamic batching and, and some other techniques, which you can apply with Optimal Neuron and make the most out of a chip. Okay, so there you go. Fast, cost-effective, simple, what's not to like? Give it a try. Uh, let us know what you think. And I hope this was useful. Uh, there's certainly more content uh, coming. Uh, maybe I'll see you on the road. I'm touring EMEA right now. So come and say hi if you're around. And uh, until next time, keep rocking.